Australia's development as a modern nation has been nothing short of amazing when you think about how far we've come in such a short period of time. Starting from a penal colony housing Britain's most undesirables to present day where we have all the luxuries of a first world country. It has been revealed that Australia will experience a surge in migration with arrival figures hitting an all-time record over the next two years. It's hard to deny immigration has been the backbone. It's the people who've come here from all walks of life to create a better life for themselves and future generations. We can all agree the net benefits of immigration outweigh the negatives. However, things aren't so straightforward. But it'll be the right migration. The right migration that makes the right contribution to... The In recent times, our government has decided to ramp the immigration train back up again, expecting a new wave of fresh Australians. Over the past decade, the issue of population growth and immigration has become a really divisive topic. The average person or family are realising their current lives are not turning out how they expected and there's a growing amount of discontent from the bulk of our population. In this slide, it's easy to see how people can be emotionally triggered when it comes to ramping up our immigration. In this story, I'm going to investigate what's happening. I'll explore the issues and then give my opinion on where things stand. I'm proud of the fact that we kept Australia out of the global economic recession. The year is 2009. It's the middle of the GFC, a time of great uncertainty. Big Australia was a term used by former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd to describe an increase in the population of Australia from 22 million in 2010 to 36 million in 2050. Along with the politics needed to react to it. I actually believe in a big Australia. I make no apology for that. This is at the time in which our population started ramping up. It's also a time when people went from having an easy life to one of struggle. It's easy to understand that when people are in pain and struggling that they can easily point the finger at the source of that pain and Big Australia was in the media and it was being talked up by the PM at the time. The new wave is much larger than our previous Kevin Rudd years numbers. Prior to the pandemic, our national net overseas migration was between 200 to 250,000 for the previous 15 years. And that was actually a big leap from what it had been the previous 30 years to that. So 650,000 over two years is another massive jump in the numbers. Once again, the population numbers are ramping up at a time of great uncertainty and when people are really struggling. It's end of Australia's rental crisis, affordability plunging to record low. In case you've been living under a rock, we also have a housing shortage. Even if we create plans to house all of these new people, there comes the question of can we actually do it? In 2013, the Productivity Commission warned that for infrastructure to keep up with population growth, we would need to spend five times more in the next 50 years than what we did in the last 50 years. There becomes a greater question, even if we had the money to do it, could we actually do it? Housing is a sort of a, a pillar, if you like, around which health, well-being, wealth and opportunity is based. The post-COVID environment we're in is one that has left many builders and developers on the rocks. On top of that, they have higher labour costs due to the labour shortage. I've been really trying to keep an open mind on this one, but it feels like an insurmountable challenge over the next three to five years. Even if productivity of dwellings can go up, it's just going to push house prices up. Part of the growth in the camp against Big Australia is not because there's a whole bunch of racists out there and they want to close our borders. It's because we already have issues of our own, such as the housing problem. Many people in the no camp for Big Australia are simply there for this reason. I have a certain level of trepidation about this next part because basically I'm going to rant on politicians. That's because I don't trust them and a lot of people are going to realise in the coming years that they're not as wealthy as what they thought they were. You see, politicians are not smart. They don't really need to be. They just need to toe their party's line and their party's line is to take power and hold it. One of the ways they do this is they sell us a story that they're doing a good job of running the country and that is through increased GDP. When you look at our comparison uh, with the G7, our GDP growth is the highest, higher than any G7 country. An incredibly easy way to fudge the numbers is to just immigrate more people in. It's very simple, but it's worked very effectively over a long period of time. 
this country is one of the lucky countries. We have great housing, even though its affordability is definitely getting worse. We have great education, we have great infrastructure, amongst other things. That shouldn't paint over the cracks though. For example, if you took immigration away, Australia's population would be shrinking. That doesn't exactly scream out great place to live. We should be asking questions like, why are we living the way we're living? Because most people can agree our standards are slipping. I think that if we had a better handle on our problems, we would be able to take more people in. I get the feeling that there wouldn't be such a large opposition to it if that was the case. In the words of Aristotle, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. For now, this is Australia and it's 2023, so it's guaranteed to be used as a political football whilst we let all the actual problems bubble away. In other words, business as usual. If you like this video, please subscribe. Catch you next time.